Hello, my name is Reynard Wilson, and you're watching another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the show where I, your friend and raconteur, Reynard Wilson, attempt to delve into the strange, freaky world of one man's brain. His name is Mark Steele, and he's often described as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist because he believes in some far out, wacky, zany, crazy ass things. And that's what this show is about. If you want to know more about what Mark Steele believes, just listen back to all the episodes I've done. There are a whole bunch of them. And uh, yeah, I would love you to watch them. In fact, even better, subscribe to my show. Because at the moment, Mark Steele has more subscribers on his BitChute channel than I do on my YouTube channel. And that's an absolute shame. Today, I'd like to cast my attention away from the great man himself and towards one of his followers. This chap's name is Andy Osborne, and he runs an organization called the Swindon and Wiltshire Residents Association. That might sound like a, a sensible organization for concerned homeowners, but it's actually an organization that consists of mainly Andy and almost nobody else. And he seems to be in the business of parroting, repeating Mark Steele's claims. He, he seems to believe that everything Mark Steele believes is true. And if you'll notice in this video, he's wearing a Save Us Now t-shirt. And Save Us Now is the political party formed by and for the benefit exclusively of Mark Steele. So we're basically listening to Mark Steele's words, but from somebody else's mouth. While we was all locked down illegally in our homes, they were digging up the streets and putting in an infrastructure. Now, some of you may have seen these masks everywhere. Please come and take one of these leaflets, guys. It will open your eyes as what's, what they are trying to do for the future. Smart cities, yeah? 5G is all part of that infrastructure. I really have to apologize for the sound quality there. One of the things about doing videos about truthers is that none of them know how to record sound properly. You, you have to do so much work just to make what they say even a little bit audible. Uh, that's because they're all technically incompetent. If they knew the slightest things about how technology worked, they wouldn't be truthers. Uh, speaking of misconceptions about technology, let's rejoin Andy Osborne on another one of his little adventures through the streets of Swindon. And today he's very upset about a meter reading. Um, Swindon and Wiltshire Residents Association are out tonight to take a reading from the mast on Oxford Road. So we're going to take a reading from this mast now and we're roughly about how long, how far would you say that is? 50 meters? That's on the main road just behind these houses. Lots of schools and the doors. And right, so we're way above the recommended safety limit by the Trifield meter. Okay, that's almost peaking. Peaking, you say, Andy? Well, that machine certainly sounds like it's a, a tortured hamster. But what does it actually mean? Well, if you bother to read the scale, which is what Andy Osborne certainly didn't do, he'd see that it was stabilized at around five milliwatts per square meter. And that's about the level of energy you might receive if you stood 35 meters away from a lit candle. So it's really a not, not a very intense signal at all. A and who knows where that signal is coming from? Because even though he was pointing it at the device, that meter isn't even remotely directional. It doesn't have the ability to select what source of signal it it's listening to. It, it probably doesn't even have the range uh, the, the right kind of receiving apparatus to, to, to discriminate between any kind of stuff. It, it could be picking up uh, a, an unshielded washing machine in one of the nearby houses, or more likely the phone in Andy Osborne's hand. He was probably measuring his own phone. The, the, that's probably why the, the signal was fluctuating so much. It, it was all down to what his phone was doing. We really don't know because the machine that he was holding and using and his methodology were all pure garbage. But that didn't stop Andy from delivering a message of doom, gloom, and will you sign my petition to some of the residents in Swindon. Are you yourself experiencing any 
symptoms listed on there. Something that you might have had before well, this was. Cough anyway. Yeah, <coughs> but before before that was put there, did you have any of those symptoms? Yeah. Yes, I've yeah. Okay. So have they got? Have they? Have they increased? Have they got worse for yourself since they put that there? Uh, I think my breathing's got a bit worse. Okay. 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 I'm actually quite surprised at how many residents of Swindon are prepared to share sensitive medical secrets with a man who looks like he gets his fashion advice from Thorin Oakenshield. But but that's what he does. He basically goes door to door and asks people if they're feeling sick and if they report any kind of symptoms at all he suggests in a very direct way that it's probably caused by the 5G mast. Let's see how well that works out. We're here this evening um, because we've had some complaints and we found that it's operating over 20 times above the recommended safety limit. Sorry? I didn't know. Yeah. Um, have, has any of you or your family suffering from any of those um, symptoms on that leaflet there? I have on my own. Oh, do you? Okay, that's fair enough then. Um, well, we are, tr we are petitioning the council to get this thing removed yeah. eventually. Would you be prepared to sign a petition? No, I don't. No, that's fair enough. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. God bless. Who said being a conspiracy grifter would be an easy life? It certainly isn't for Andy Osborne, because he goes from door to door and finds himself rejected by the old age pensioners that he's attempting to scare with entirely bogus claims about 5G phones. Which is why, from time to time, even the most dedicated conspiracy grifter needs to stop and stare and maybe just look up at the sky for a few moments. Still at it. They are really going to town today. There's another one, look. It's a shame we haven't got ground-to-air missiles, lads. We can take these fuckers out. Yes, and that's why we don't want conspiracy truthers to have access to anything more dangerous than a hairdryer. Th these people can't be trusted to distinguish between entirely innocent passenger planes and uh, deadly chemtrail spewing military weapons that are controlled by the World Economic Forum and whose sole purpose is to control the weather to kill you in some kind of nefarious but ultimately unspecified way. That's what Andy Osborne actually believed. He would, if he had access to one, he would, without a moment, without a heartbeat of doubt, launch it and kill hundreds of people. That's just how the guy works. Anyway, after a brief moment contemplating a, a, a murder, Andy Osborne is back on the streets. Let's see how well he does this time. Uh, we posted a letter to you a few days ago uh, regarding the 5G mast down there. Yeah, well, we have a petition here. We're trying to get it removed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you uh, did you get this yellow leaflet that we we sent out? So none of your family is suffering from any of them symptoms at all. Well, the wife does, but she suffered from way before that. Oh, uh, uh, fair dues, yeah. But... And I also got a letter about it going up the Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Oh, you're the first person I spoke to along here that that did receive a letter oh, about it going up. Yeah, no worries. I have okay. One now. Right. So, would you be prepared to sign a petition to get it removed? Huh? Not really. No? Fair enough, that's fine. No, I'm fine with that. That's alright, well thanks for your time anyway. Right, Have a nice evening, I didn't yeah? Even notice it. <laughs> thanks for your time. Yeah, cheers, cheers. Andy Osborne struggles to understand that some people actually like having communications equipment that works. It means we can phone our friends and, and watch exciting anti-conspiracy truther videos on YouTube from our phones. What's not to like about that? Except maybe the, the nights of lost sleep and, and distraction when we could be doing something more sociable. But um, <clears throat> Andy has a new plan. Instead of going door to door, he's going to issue a warning at its source. We monitored this mast earlier, so I've got some uh, warning notices here. That's the job done. Job done. Well done, Andy. You've warned 
Swindon uh, about a, a phone mess that probably isn't doing any of those things that you think it is doing. Uh, well, what have we learned about Andy today? Well, as one of the dedicated shock troops of the Save Us Now movement, Andy is going door to door spreading fear and paranoia about the 5G phone network. We saw how Andy is entirely upset, not just about a lockdown, but about the fact that telephone engineers continue to build the infrastructure we all rely on while some of us were staying at home. We also saw Andy's uh, unsuccessful attempts to, to convince people that, that he and Mark Steele are right about the dangers of 5G. And uh, yes, we learned uh, about Andy Osborne's murderous streak, where if he actually had access to ground-to-air ground weapons, he would casually murder the contents of an airliner. That doesn't sound very friendly to me. Well, Andy, uh, we've learned a lot about you, but in doing so, I think we've learned a bit about Save Us Now and the kind of people who find this movement attractive. Uh, next week, I'll be back with the great man himself. I'm sure I will have some crazy, freaky Mark Steele stuff to, to amuse and delight you, uh, as I always do, because that's essentially the point of my show. And so I will see you back in a week's time for another Mind of Steel.